everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I have the updated version of the translocation video for AQA A-level biology and if you do want any extra help remembering the key marking points then why not give my flashcards a go which are based on mark scheme key terms definitions and answers so I'll link them below but for now let's get into it. So the first thing is just thinking about where these organic substances come from and that's taking us to what is the function of the leaves and one of the key functions is for photosynthesis so just looking here at the very basic word equation of photosynthesis carbon dioxide plus water creates glucose and oxygen and today it's this sugar component the glucose that we're interested in looking at how that is transported so glucose and other sugars which are made are organic substances because they contain carbon and all of the cells of a plant require glucose and organic substances for respiration. So the phloem is responsible for transporting the organic substances made in the leaf during photosynthesis up and down the plant so that all of the cells have a source. So the phloem tissue then, this is what we said is responsible for the transport and phloem tissue is made up of two key cells. We have sieve tube elements and companion cells. So in this diagram, we can see in the middle are the sieve tube elements. So these cells all lined up um, together. And on either side, we have the companion cells. So some of the features of a sieve tube element cell, the end walls are perforated. So we've got these holes in the end, and that's so we can have a continuous flow of the sugar solution. They are living cells, but they actually don't contain a nucleus and they have very few organelles inside, much like the xylem, so that you have a hollower tube to ensure that you can have maximum flow of the sugary solution. Now, translocation in plants does require active transport. So they don't have very many organelles in the sieve tube elements, but the companion cells do. And the companion cells are responsible for providing the ATP, which is required for the active transport of the sucrose, the organic substances, into the sieve tube element, and then it can be transported en masse. So this is all linked to what we call the mass flow hypothesis. And it's linked to the idea of there's always a source, which is where the organic substance is created. And in this example, we're thinking about sucrose, and that is created in the leaves during photosynthesis. The sink is where the sucrose is going to be transported to and used. Sucrose is going to be used by the respiring cells. So that is where it's going to be transported to. We're going to go through exactly how we go from the production in the source cell to the sucrose, or it could be glucose, transported into the sieve tube elements all the way to the sink cell. But first, let's just think about this source to sink mass flow hypothesis in a bit more detail using a basic model before we go on to looking at all the cells in the plant. So I've simplified it here, just looking at our source cell, which is a leaf cell, which is going to be photosynthesizing. That will be connected to a sink cell, which will be any respiring cell. And the phloem is always next to the xylem, which will be transporting water. In this model, we're thinking about if we just had it in a tank of water, what would happen? But actually, instead of it being a tank of water, you could imagine that as all of the other surrounding plant cells um, around the leaf and the respiring cells. So because the photosynthesizing leaf cell is going to be creating glucose or sucrose or other organic substances, those are all soluble and that will lower the water potential of the source cell. And as a result, the water from the surrounding cells, or in this model, the tank of water, will move into the source cell by osmosis. At the sink cell, that cell is going to be respiring and therefore using up lots of the soluble sugars. So there won't be as many soluble sugars left in the sink cell. So that cell will have a more positive water potential compared to its surroundings. And that will mean water will move out of the sink cell to the surrounding cells or to the xylem by osmosis. That will have an impact on the pressure of the two cells. 
So the source cell will have an increased hydrostatic pressure because more liquid is moving into it. Whereas the sink cell will have a decreased hydrostatic pressure because the water and liquid is moving out. So because the source cell comparatively has a higher pressure, that will force the liquid, the sugary solution, inside of the source cell, up and out of the phloem, towards the sink cell. And that will then move this sugary solution en masse to the respiring cells that require that sugar. So that's the model of mass flow hypothesis. So what we mean by going from the source cell to the sink cell. But we're going to add in the actual details of the role of the companion cell and the sieve tube element and also the xylem in translocation. So you may have seen my previous video on this, which as you can see from the copyright down here, was actually from 2020. This is an updated version based on what I've noticed about what AQA are now currently wanting in the mark scheme compared to what it used to be. So it's actually less detail, you'll be pleased to know. So the first step is photosynthesis is occurring in those source cells, and that would be the leaf. And the chloroplast containing chlorophyll will absorb that light energy. Photosynthesis occurs and creates organic substances such as sucrose. The part that is now simplified is you don't need to know all the details of the co-transport of that sucrose with hydrogen ions at the companion cell to get it into the sieve tube element. Instead, on the mark scheme, they accept that that sucrose is actively transported from that source cell, which is the leaf, into the sieve tube element via the companion cell using that companion cell. Now, when I say using the companion cell, this is where we mean it's using the ATP, which has been produced by the mitochondria in the companion cell because the sieve tube element doesn't have those organelles. So that is the detail that you need to explain how the sucrose that was created in photosynthesis gets into the sieve tube element. We need to think how does that sucrose get transported along the sieve tube elements? And this is the bit where it's linked to pressure changes. So the first thing is now we've got lots of dissolved sucrose in the sieve tube elements, it lowers the water potential in this section of the phloem. The xylem lies directly next to the phloem, and as a result, water moves into the sieve tube elements by osmosis. Because we've got water now moving in, we've got lots and lots of liquids. We've got very, very high volume, and that creates a high hydrostatic pressure. And that high hydrostatic pressure then forces the liquid towards an area of lower hydrostatic pressure. So we need to look at then why is there a lower hydrostatic pressure by the sink cells and how do or how does the sucrose then get transported into the sink cell? So in the sink cell, that is where respiration is occurring. So the glucose and sucrose is constantly being used up in respiration or it could be being converted and um, turned into insoluble starch. More sucrose gets actively transported from the sieve tube element into the sink cell. And because we are now um, transporting lots and lots of sucrose into the sink cell, the water potential decreases. So the water that was in the sieve tube element will move by osmosis into the sink cell. Some of it will actually move by osmosis back into the xylem as well, because as the water, um, as the sucrose leaves the phloem, that area will now have a more positive water potential. The result of this, though, is there is now a lower volume at this section of the phloem. And because the volume is lower, the hydrostatic pressure is lower, and that's how we continually maintain this high hydrostatic pressure at this section of the sieve tube element near the source cell and a lower hydrostatic pressure in the sieve tube element near the sink cell. Now finally, you can actually do investigations to um, identify is it definitely the phloem in which the organic substances are being transported in a plant. So one of these methods is called traces. traces. And the traces involves tracking or tracing 
the location of radioactively labelled carbon. So what they would do is they'd have a particular plant that they're investigating, they'd have it isolated and only provide carbon dioxide which has been radioactively labelled. Over a period of time, that plant will be absorbing that carbon dioxide through its stomata by um, diffusion. That carbon dioxide will be used by photosynthesis and will create the sugars, so the glucose and sucrose in the plant. Now, all of the carbons within those sugars will have come from this radioactively labelled carbon dioxide. So now all the sugar in the plant will be radioactively labelled as well. And this radioactively labelled carbon, if it's placed on X-ray film, it turns the X-ray film black. So that means if we were to take thin slices through the stem, place it on the X-ray film, we can then identify which parts of the stem contain the sugar and therefore identify which cells the sugar is being transported in. You could also do that with a whole stem rather than just a slice. Place it on the X-ray film um, and you can see the area where the phloem is that would be highlighted by the radioactive um, sugars and turn black on the film to show you that the phloem is where the sugars are and therefore it's proof that the sugars are being transported in the phloem. Another way to investigate this translocation is called ringing experiments. And in these experiments, they'll take a ring of the bark and phloem off the tree. And that's what we can see here, that complete ring has been removed. What you'll find happening over time then is this part of the tree above the ring will start to swell. And that's because all of the phloem have been removed. So that sugary solution can't be transported any further down. So it starts to swell just above the ring. Now to prove that is a sugary solution, you can take samples of the liquid um, and test it for sugar. And in doing that, they've proven that it is the phloem that transports sugars because when they take a ring of those phloem out, the sugars don't get transported any further. So in summary, um, the mass transport of organic substances is known as translocation. Mass transport of organic substances such as sucrose or glucose in plants um, is from a source, which is the leaf, to the sink, which is the respiring cells. And that movement is due to changes in hydrostatic pressure. The high hydrostatic pressure at the source site is created by the active transport of sucrose into the sieve tube element which lowers the water potential, so water then moves in by osmosis. Tracers and ringing experiments can be used to investigate the transport of these organic substances. And in the new spec papers, those have been quite common application questions um, looking at the um, tracer results or ringing experiments. Mm -hmm.